Hi, welcome to the first edition of Producer to Producer, sponsored by the APC, the Association de Producteurs de Cinéma. We're in the beautiful city of Paris, the city of lights. My name is Boyana Momirovic and I'll be your host today. I'm very happy to announce our guests, Mr. Tony Scott and Mr. George Berman. Mr. Berman is a French producer who founded the company Partisan in 1991. They've produced commercials, music videos, animation, feature films. Tony Scott, the famous producer and director who runs the company Scott Free with his brother Ridley. Tony has the honor of having two films come out in France at the same time. One, a huge blockbuster production called Unstoppable, and the other, very much on the opposite, a small independent production called Welcome to the Rileys. So please welcome our guests, Mr. Tony Scott and Mr. George Berman. So. Ready? So I'm ready. The, the, first, the first topic is to uh, try to figure out the differences between the American system and the French system. So my first question is, you know, who is meant to be putting the financing together, you know, in a movie? The, the financing um, for our movies, it, it varies, you know, but we do have a housekeeping deal with 20th Century Fox, and, uh, and that is our home, and, uh, and when we actually, uh, we, do, we do a movie with Fox, then they they finance it with sometimes with a foreign financier. Every project is different, every project varies. But right now I'm talking to Sammy Adida, I'm talking to Sammy about, um, and so I've worked, this will be my third movie with Sammy hopefully, um, and uh, he financed True Romance and he financed Domino, and he's looking to finance Potsdamer. Yeah, and uh, so it, 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 it's, a, it's horses for courses. It depends on the project. You know, the, the last movie I just did with, uh, I did with Fox was fully financed by Fox, which is unstoppable. Man on Fire was, it was part financed by Arn and Milton's company, 50% and 50% by Fox. But, but you, it's, it's hard getting your financing until you've got a distribution deal. And Fox are out. That's always my goal, that they distribute and, uh, they, and, and, and they completely 100% finance or, or 50%. But with Sammy, Sammy's going to do it with, with Lionsgate. So, um, you know, in the U.S. you have executive producer and producer. So can you tell us the difference between executive producer and producer? Um, a producer is, I, if I quote names, it might help uh, cut to it a little faster. You know, Jerry Bruckheim is what I call a producer. A producer is normally somebody who actually comes to you with the project and he owns the project. Yeah. Executive producer is is there as an executive on on, on um, balancing finance and creative and so I don't think it's any different from, from America and France. I think it's uh, the titles remain the same, don't they? Well in France, you know, executive producer is more like your line producer. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and the producer, what you would call the producer is actually someone that is in charge of putting the financing together, developing the project, of course, owning the rights and stuff like that, you know. And, uh, you know, there is, you know, in France, there is not this, the, the dimension of the producer who's really responsible for the end result of the movie. Maybe a, okay. a little bit more well, like in the US. George, for instance, on this last movie I did, I think there were eight executive producers. Yeah, I saw, <laughs> I, I, I saw that. So, so the executive producers are just people that you know needs to fill their days, and they don't know exactly what to do. So they come to the set. Uh, no, it, it, I, I use them in different ways, you know. But honestly, I'm I think I, I'm if you're talking about the world generally between France and America, um, uh, it's a little different because I do I'm a, I'm a director which has a reputation, I've got a big track record. So you know, I, I get my meetings or my discussions out of the way in the room beforehand, and very rarely do I get somebody standing on the set next to me. You know, only back in the early days, for instance, on Jerry Bruckheimer was there from 7 a.m. in the morning on Top Gun to, to 11 at night, but uh, uh, the subsequent five movies I did with Jerry, he'd come maybe once a week or, 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 or rarely, you know, because they, it's a shorthand between the two of us, and it's a it's a telephone call, and it's a terrible word in this business. There's a trust, but uh, but it's a, it's a but with people I've worked with a long time, that trust is a good word. And um, what are the agents meant to be doing? The agents. Yes. What are they meant to be doing? The agents. Well, I'm with one of the biggest, most powerful agencies in the world, CAA. Um, and what the agents are meant to be doing is meant to be finding me my next project. But you know what? It that it. Uh, 
It, re it rarely happens that way. You know, my projects come through relationships, come through me looking at the world around me. Um, and uh, I don't know how, out of how many movies I've done, how many have come directly through an agent's contact, but once I, I get a project that they want to do, they help me get it financed, they help me get it cast, and a lot of the cast, for instance, um, I take comes out of my agency, comes out of CAA, so they help me close deals, yeah. So that's, and uh, Richard Lovett, who's my, who's, who's been my agent now for, God, 20 plus years, yeah, he's head of CAA now, and I have, you know, inside the agency too, Two other, two other agents, yeah, but they and they all have a, a particular role in closing on particular things for me. So, uh, when did you create the company? Scott Free, honestly, I'll give you a little bit. I'll go backwards. I'll give you. I'll go back, and I've actually had to pull up the dates here. It starts in 1973. 1973 was not Scott Free. It was RSA Ridley formed RSA on his own in 1973, and I was still at art school. I was still at the Royal College of Art. And, uh, and then he said, you know, you should come and join me and do, and do some commercials and, you know, pay dad back the money that you owe him. Because after eight years in art school as a painter, I owed people some money. <laughs> so we started in 1973 as RSA, which was a commercial production company. And the commercial production company then um, developed into a company that did rock videos, which were big in those days. The name Scott Free was formed because I did a, a movie as my, my diploma film with the Royal College of Art, an hour-long film. And I needed a production company as a name. I call it Scott Free because Scott Free in English means Scott Free means free as a bird. Yeah, so it means we are free creatively. We are free. We have no ambitions. We are free, free, free. And uh, so that's why we call it Scott Free. And our logo is a little bird, which which identifies the company Scott Free. Yeah, and that's how the name was formed. But the the company itself did not come into being until the early eighties. Yeah, and. Uh, when Ridley did the Duelists, um, I then did the Hunger. Ridley did Alien. They were all affiliated or or were Scott Free, Scott, Scott Free Productions. You know, I'm interested to to understand what you know. What are the the goals or the strategy of Scott Free right now? I mean, you know, in the past five years, I would say, because it looks yeah. that there has been an acceleration in terms of your activity. The goals of Scott Free are selfishly <laughs> to continue for Ridley and I to make our own movies, but more so is to help, is to get other movies made for other people. We want to become a product, we want to become producers in a production company which makes a variety of different products. So, you know, last year we did six different movies, two big movies, which were, or three big movies, one by Ridley, one by me, um, uh, 18, um, and then we did actually like seven movies, and we did four other small, more indie type movies, and, and I, I love the mix and match of of all those, of all those, those, those different types of movies, and we have a very, very successful TV department, and we've got, we have uh, uh, two shows on TV now in series, and we just had six seasons with numbers, and The Good Wife is running at the moment and to huge critical and um, monetary acclaim. Yeah, so, um, and we've got two more shows starting uh, in the spring. So, and we have a production company here at RSA, which is our commercial production company, which we have a great breeding ground for great directors here. So, how many people are working at Scott Free at the moment? Because it looks like, you know, you are dealing with many, many different projects, you know, TV series, you know, uh, your films, you know, your, your young director's movies. So, so how, the, you know, how does it look like a company like yours compared to, you know, to what you know, we would have here, you know, for our little production companies? Uh, George, it looks busy. It looks full. <laughs> it looks full, and it looks busy. And I'd be remiss to say I, I can tell you exactly how many people we got on permanent staff here. But um, we have a permanent staff in the TV department, and this this TV department is cranking. It's working 24/7, and uh, and in the in the in the movie department too. And I. I'd be remiss to give you actual numbers, but obviously as a movie comes in, or as a project comes in, people come in and they work as, as executive producers and they, you know, all produce producers and then we restaff according to how much we've got going on. I think, we, uh, I think we've got 20 plus full-time employees over at Scott Free. Okay, well that's, that's a fairly big operation for, for, yeah. know, for, for France. I don't know. It's, oh, it's 20 uh, plus, right now I think there must be almost double that in there because we're so busy. Uh, okay, so, so now, in terms of your project, I've listed 25 projects in uh, development. Uh -huh. does, does it make sense to you, uh, 25 projects? Um, you know, it's, 
it's such a it's always been hard it's always been tough to get movies made and now is particularly tough but I've got uh, 11 out of the 25 and all those projects are projects I've been attached to for a long time projects I've got a passion about whether I can quote things like The Warriors or, or Hell's Angels or Potsdamer or, or Tom Mix and Pancho Villa they're not just things that we throw into the pot and say let's develop the, you know the times change and people don't and right now it's not a good time for it's not a good time for Tom Mix and Pancho Villa you know because it's a huge epic movie um, but there will be a time, and I will make that movie. Warriors is not a time because people are scared of the violence, you know, the, well, not people, but the studios. What about being a producer on, on, your, on, on your movie? So how, how does that work? When, when, do you, when do you decide, or how is it decided that you become a, a producer of the movie? George is part of my contract, and it, and it just gives you that, that gives you a little bit more control as a producer than just as a, as a creative force, as a director. So in my contract on every movie, it says I have a producer credit and I have and I'm a director credit. Yeah, and that gives me control with the studios, gives me control with the financing, gives me control in terms of uh, creative, which is a, it gives me you know in terms of choice of actor, it uh, everything. It gives you it just gives you that 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 not a little bit more, a lot more power. And not, not power to shove it down people's throats, but power just to be able to protect myself creatively and financially.